this LG home theater is plugged into the power and this is what happens when I try to turn it on. It dims the display then it goes off. The home theater does not give a warning or any protection messages but it just goes off on its own. I have made other videos about, I have made other videos about LG home theaters and hi-fis namely the please wait error, the deprotection error and the S protection error. Well, this is a different case because this home theater is just switching itself off without giving any warning. Hello there, my name is Dominic and I'm going to show you how I usually go about tackling these types of problems. When I got a call about this home theater, I first of all thought that the problem was the motherboard and that it needed replacing. But seeing the error right on my face, I'm kind of thinking that the problem is not the motherboard. I'm guessing the problem is with the power board. This is the LG DH4220S model of home theater. And let's open it and try and fix it. Now, I am making this video as an entertainment piece only. I do not recommend you, an untrained user, to open your home theater and try and fix it yourself. These types of electronics that plug in directly to the wall not only contain voltages that can give you an electrical shock but can also kill you. So beware. This is how the electricity flows in this home theater. The power is plugged in to here, it passes through the fuse and so this is the power supply. This supplies power to the motherboard. The whole green piece over here is the motherboard. And this black piece over here is the pickup assembly. This is where the disk gets read and the information comes through the processor and out through the amplifier over here to the speakers back here. Now, I said the problem might be with the power supply and I have already seen the fault. If you can see it, pause the video and try and figure out where the problem is. After looking at the power supply, my eyes zeroed in on this capacitor over here. It is swollen because the top is not flat unlike the other capacitors like this one over here or this one over here. I am going to take out this power supply and replace that capacitor and see if the home theater will work. This is the capacitor that I have just removed from the power supply. You can see it's swollen at the top. And this is a 2200 microfarad by 10 volts capacitor. So I need to replace this capacitor. This is a brand new capacitor that I had bought a while ago. Now, you might be wondering if it's a little bit different, why do I need to replace it with this one? The faulty one is labeled as 200 microfarads by 10 volts but the one I'm going to replace it is with a 2200 microfarads by 25 volts when it comes to replacing capacitors you just have to match the capacitance in this case 2200 microfarads and make sure that the voltage of the capacitor that you're going to be replacing with is higher or equal to the faulty capacitors voltage in this case 25 volts is higher than 10 volts so it's okay if it was 2200 microfarads by 16 volts that would have been better another thing to note is the polarity the line over here means that this is the negative side of this capacitor and i love to need to match it with the line over here so i just match the negative in this case you can also see the positive and the negative line must match with that white dashed line at the bottom 
bend the leads a little bit so that the capacitor does not fall over and solder it. Now it's time to test this home theater. I have just plugged it in off screen and now I will be pressing the power button. Now that has not worked and I have just realized the problem. The problem is with the capacitor that I have just replaced with it's rotating meaning it's faulty it's not supposed to do that so i need to replace this capacitor yet again normal capacitors don't just rotate on their own like this one so i'm going to remove this capacitor and replace it with yet another capacitor replaced the capacitor and this time round I have a 50 volts capacitor the only disadvantage with this capacitor is that it's very big and it barely fit in that space but I'm basically using this for testing purposes if it works then I'm going to buy a smaller capacitor that will fit in that space and will work just fine probably a 16 volts by 2200 microfarad capacitor this is round number two of testing. I have plugged in the home theater off screen to a power source and I'm going to turn this on by pressing the power button. It's on. Let's see if it will sustain the power. It's saying DVD CD and it's reading. And that's the motor rotating. Let me try a disc and see if it will work. The power has sustained very well and the disc is reading too. Play the disc. The disc is playing too. The last thing to test will be the sound output. Let me find a speaker and plug it in. I have this cable plugged in at the back of the home theater and now I will plug it in into this TV speaker. And it's working fine. So thank you for watching and goodbye. I finally bought a pair of capacitors that I used to replace the big capacitor with. Take note of the space I saved when I replaced the big capacitor with the smaller 16 volt by 2200 microfarad capacitor.